Hi there everyone, it's the end of a really long day of exploring and we've come out and we've finished off walking most of the Clarence Railway that we started a long long time ago but we found something else really really special and as you can see here we've got some railway lines still in situ over 25 years since the last train rolled this way. You want to know more? Well stay tuned. We're going exploring. This is a Jenny Cam with me, Jennifer Kerr. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. <laughs> Hi there everyone. Well, it's a really special video. Now, you might remember quite some time ago, we did a video that was a part one of walking on the railway here in Coxo. And we never got round to filming the part two. Well, actually, now we have. So we're back pretty much where we left off in that video. So you remember here now, we're just down from the level crossing on the main road and it's gone a bit more overgrown than it was, but there's where the ivy is, we actually saw the concrete post last time and hopefully we've got some archive footage. But we're going to put a link in the description box down below that takes you to a website which has a photograph taken from just there. And that post is the only thing here really that's recognisable that's also in that picture. And that will give you a frame of reference. So we're going to start walking now on the line down towards Ferry Hill where this railway line eventually meets up with what is now the modern East Coast Main Line. We're going to explore it and see if there's anything at all left to see. So come with me, we're going to walk past what is actually probably the old station building, but it's been extended, it's been re-rendered, it's really been chopped and changed, so probably nothing recognisable. But we're going to pick up the track bed down on the other side, and that's where our journey will continue. So this is where we're going to pick up the track bed again. So originally, the rails would have come right along here, tucked up probably quite tight to where that, that hedge has really grown and bushed out. And this is where Zoe actually remembers the tracks definitely still being in the late 80s. And hopefully it's not too muddy, but we can get on it now. It's public footpath and we're just going to walk and see where we get to. So come with me. It's all right actually, it looks like it's going to get a little bit muddier further on. We'll just have to be careful. But certainly the ground underneath here does feel quite firm. I'm not going to say it's railway ballast, but it does feel like this hardcore just underneath the grass layer. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be all right as we follow this. It was only ever single track, although I have seen track diagrams which suggest that there were some sidings that went over there and another one that went over that way. But it's actually really difficult to tell given that it's been you know, best part of 30 years since there was actually a railway properly here. This is the bit where um, pretty much it looks like people start to use this. There's another cut in off a tarmac road and it, it looks like there's dirt bikes and stuff come through here. Now, the railway line goes in pretty much a straight line down to where the A1M motorway is. And just to put it into context, I think we're between junctions 61 and 60, uh, more towards junction 61, and uh, it'll just go underneath. And I'm quite curious to see what that bridge looks like, um, because clearly the motorway was built whilst the railway was still in use, so there should be a railway bridge there. And then on the other side, again, it should meet up with another railway line before it then reaches the East Coast Main Line. And it will be really interesting to see if there's any relics there because there's a number of roads in that area that passed over and under on bridges. And I really want to see what's left of those. So we're going to pick our way through the mud now and let's hope we don't get too dirty. So where we are here now, it feels like when they've taken the track up, they've just tipped uh, just gravel straight over the old ballast. So it's still quite well drained and you can see quite clearly defined here, one of the drainage ditches. There would have been a ditch at either side of the track 
just to siphon that water away. And then you can see this banking up at the side of the rail route. And there's even some small remnants of the old railway fencing. And you can just see them completely enveloped by the hedge, but still there nonetheless. We've reached a point where there's been an occupation crossing. This is where a farmer would have access from one side of the railway to the other, just for gaining access to the fields. Now those gates are still here. Instead of crossing a railway, they just cross this path. But there are some railway relics, so come with me. I want to show you this. This concrete post is the original post, and you can see where the wire would have been that would have been the railway fencing going that way. And it's still got on the original hinges. Now, I don't know whether this is the original gate, it could be the original gate, um, but it is on the original hinges, and this would have opened to allow access. Now, I don't think that's the original post on the other side, but if we go across to the other side of the track bed, we can see that there is another identical concrete post. We've got the mounting points for that wire for the railway fencing. And this gate, again, I'm not sure if it's an original or not, but it is sat on the original hinges. And it's interesting, this gate and that gate are to exactly the same design. So they could be the original railway gate for this occupation crossing. We just stopped here for a little bit of a rest and they've very helpfully put a couple of benches here. Now these aren't made out of sleepers or anything like that. But what I actually wanted to show you is you can see how the railways were built to keep the track as level as possible as it ran through the undulations in the landscape. So you remember further back up there, we were in a little bit of a cutting. We talked about those fence posts and the drainage ditch, and you could see that they'd actually excavated out to keep the track level. Now here we've got the opposite, and we're across fields, but the railway base is raised up, again, to stop any gradients on the railway line and you can really see the way it traverses the landscape. We just noticed this, it's a little bit of the original railway infrastructure that's still here, still doing its job. And it's allowing a land drain from these fields on this side to pass underneath the railway embankment. We can hear the water running Although unfortunately we can't get down there just to see what kind of a structure it is. And I suspect that it's made of stone and there'll just be a little culvert with an arch and maybe some wing walls. But it's so overgrown it's impossible to tell and there's no way of climbing down there without running the risk of actually falling into all that water and mud. So we're going to leave that be and we're nearly at the bridge where the A1M motorway goes over the top and I'm interested to see what kind of style they built this in and I suspect it's quite a utilitarian bridge it dates from I think the early 1960s so at the time this railway still had around 20 to 25 years of being operated left in it so that would have actually been quite an essential structure so let's go and take a look at it This is really quite interesting. This is another occupational crossing, but it's at an angle. But this tells us a lot about the previous one. Because this is disused, and probably has been since the railway was here, what we can actually see is we've actually got two concrete posts, one on either side. That one has fallen over, and they're quite narrow. But that one over there does seem to still have its gate on, so we can check and see whether the ones that we saw further back are actually the original. And look, it's still got the original hinges. You can see them here in all their detail. The gate on this side's just gone, but you can see where it was. And on this side, we get a glimpse of just how the gates would have shut. And it's a really simple mechanism. You can see the metal piece still on there, and the end of the gate would have had a spring-loaded bar that as it went across there, it would push in and then click back out and we'll just hold that gate shut. Really simple mechanism. And by the looks of that gate, they are all originals. 
So it's amazing what you can find on a disused railway line. So much of the infrastructure is left behind long after the railway is gone, if you know what you're looking for. So come on. We've reached the bridge. It's quite loud because of road noise. But what you can see is that when they cast this bridge in situ, back in the 1960s, they would have used standard formers. These are the moulds that effectively they build up and fill with the concrete, let it set and take the moulds away. And they just have standard patterns. And in this instance, what they've actually done is they've effectively got a bridge that would allow two ways through. This side here was always for the railway, but they've actually taken the opportunity to also put the farmer's access through the other side. And we get this very interesting bridge where we've got two portals, almost as if it was designed for double railway track. But instead, we've got the road and the rail. The road's still there, the rail is long gone. We've reached the first level crossing. Again, more car noise. But this actually, if you went past in the car, you wouldn't really know that this had been a railway. The road surface has no markings. There's no gate posts. There's nothing here. Just a path going across from one side to the other. So I can see that the railway continues on the other side. Uh, and it'll be interesting to just keep following that. There should be another road, the remains of a bridge, and eventually it will join the East Coast Main Line. Now, I'm not sure that we've got enough time to get all the way there today, but let's press on and just see what we can find. It's quite interesting here. We've just come upon a bridge still in situ, and it's told us something interesting about this railway line. We thought that we were walking on a layer of gravel that had just been put onto the ballast. But what's quite clear is a lot of the ballast has been dug out and taken away when they lifted the line. And the reason that we know this is because that bridge is way up in the air. So there's probably about three feet of ballast has just been dug out and probably sold on a second-hand aggregate. Oh wow, it's a steel bridge, but the track bed is wide enough for double track. This is actually a really interesting discovery for a few reasons, and I'm going to talk you through them all one by one. Firstly, it's a steel bridge, but the original steel deck is still here. And that surprises me, because if they went to the trouble to dig out the ballast, why wouldn't they take this for scrap metal? The other thing as well is, quite clearly, we've got a track bed that is wide enough for double track, although there's only been single track here, and certainly this bridge survives a single track. But you can look down there and see the abutments are for double track. And I don't know whether there was ever a second track, or whether it was just easier for them to put that in when they originally built it. Now, something else that's really interesting, if we look at the ground here, you can see where the rails went. And there's two grooves in the bridge deck. This is the load-bearing part of it. And in this, there is still a rail chair that would have held the rail in place. And you can just see it poking through the dirt. And it does lead me to believe that there could actually be others. The other side is very, very overgrown. So I've actually exposed this rail chair just so you can see what it is and how it's fastened to the bridge. And what we've managed to expose is there's four bolts, these sort of square headed bolts, and they'll be bolted down to the bridge deck and there'll be a big beam across here that takes the weight of the train. And uh, the rail itself would fit in here. They're handed as well. That's always on the outside of the rail. That's the inside. And you can tell because the inside is always a slightly different shape and has a kind of hook underneath that's just visible there where the rail hooks into. It also tells us something about the last track that was on this railway line or certainly over this bridge. This is a bullhead rail fixing, not a flat bottom. So the rail on this line was most likely from a very long time ago. And it's actually, there's quite a lot you can tell from these fittings 
but we're going to bury it back up now so that nobody trips on it. This bridge is actually so interesting. I thought it was a good idea to come down underneath and take a good look because there's a lot here of information about this railway line. Take this for example first. These here are precast concrete. That tells me that this bridge has undergone some renovations at some point in railway ownership and for whatever reason they've ditched the stone caps on these walls and just cast in concrete in its place. If we go through to the other side the original stone looks to still be there. Now up there we can see that steel bridge deck but again it's sat on cast concrete capping stones and that means it's not the original. It has been replaced but as we saw up on the top it's been replaced with a structure to take bullhead rail so it probably was getting on quite a bit at the point that the railway line closed but this was a very old line. It's really difficult in this dark to see, but you can actually just about see the structure of the bridge. So you can see up there the troughs. That's where those rails are in, and that's where the business end of this bridge is. That's what's taking all the weight. You could actually cut away all of those other metal plates, and the bridge would still take the weight of a train, because everything else is really just about neatening things up and making it safe for permanent way workers to walk across. If we look further over here to the other side of the bridge, you can see that we've, we've got no capping stone on this. The precast concrete that's underneath that bit of the bridge doesn't extend this far. Although what is interesting is that actually these capping stones have been replaced as well. So these are also precast concrete and it does make me wonder what happened to need these to be replaced? The rest of the structure looks to be truly original and we've got this ashlar stone coursework that is very characteristic of railway constructions. Really strong and you can see the mortar courses are really tiny. These blocks of stone are so well cut by the masons that they don't actually need a lot of mortar to fill in any of the gaps. But this really is an interesting find on this route. There's a really interesting structure here. This bridge has been rebuilt and it actually does look quite recent though I suspect it's not as recent as it looks. But there has been a bridge here before. I think it probably had the steel deck similar to what we saw on that previous bridge. But if you look down here the little farm occupation track that goes underneath immediately goes over a pretty little humpback bridge. So we've got road under, then over. And it really is an interesting piece of construction and one which, if you were to model a railway, this could provide some really great inspiration for a way to fit things into your model landscape. So what it actually looks like from this side, you can just see that there's some kind of stone-built culvert underneath, but these are a modern addition, probably because the original walls fell over, went weak, or for whatever reason needed rebuilding. But it is interesting that it does show us that this bridge was built fully for double track. So maybe this line was double track, got singled, and then the bridge that's up there needed replacing, and so they only needed to put a single track bridge. But because this was stone built, all you needed to do was put new wing walls on and you were sorted. So it retained its full double track width. This bridge still has its parapet. So this is probably what that previous bridge would have originally looked like. But we're not going to dwell on it. We're going to keep pushing on. We want to try and make to the where the level crossing was that uh, should be there uh, before dark comes in. It is getting quite dark. And then I want to walk a little way up the road because there's a second line and I think that there's a small possibility that there is still some track in the road that we might be able to see. So let's, let's crack on because we're losing daylight here. We've reached that road I told you about. There's no evidence of the level crossing here. And actually the path does continue on the other side and there's just a little bit more to the East Coast Main Line. But we're going to cover that in a third part to this video series. But just to round this video off, what I actually want to do is head up there. There's a second railway line that ran from a different quarry over there 
and they all funnel together and all come in at the same junction on the East Coast Main Line. But up there I think there might still be rails in the road and it'd be a great way to finish this video. We've reached West Cornford. This is the second line that I told you about and the reason that I wanted to end the video here is because as you can see the level crossing still exists and there's still track on either side. Now it's going to be really interesting to see just how far this track goes. The last train ran on this line probably in about 1994, something like that. But the fact that the infrastructure is all still here suggests to me that it probably got lost in the paperwork of privatisation. We've still got remains of the automatic barrier level crossing, we've still got wicket gates, and West Cornford Station was here. And you can see the humps where the platform used to be, and there's even some sleepers in the old station yard. So it's the end of the day, you can see we're losing light, but we finally reached those rails that we looked at right at the beginning of the video. And this is where we have to end today. But next time in this infrequent series, we're going to come back for a part three and we're going to see where these rails go. Today's video is sponsored by Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders designed to be fully compatible with every manufacturer's locomotive. Visit train-o-matic.com to browse the full range and see what they've got suitable for you. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon, and an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYMR ish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papair, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, and 3B Rail. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.